Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. This is a class for May 25th, 26th, and 27th. So let's go over uh, the activities for today. First of all, guys, we're going to check homework, which was uh, workbook pages 102 and 103. So make sure before we start doing this, you already have these uh, two pages answered, okay? Then we're also going to go ahead and, and with teacher Laurita, check reading part two of practice test five on the FC or the green book. Remember, it's vocabulary practice and reading part two as well, okay? Uh, that's for the FC practice as well. And today we're going to work on unit nine, uh, lesson C, which is a grammar class. Today we're going to be talking about participle clauses, okay? Uh, participle clauses is just a form of reducing relative clauses. We'll see that today, okay? And the last thing, uh, we're going to assign some homework to you guys, okay? So let's get started. Let's move on and get started with teacher love, okay? Good. Hello people, you know how this works, so let's get to work quick so we can end quick this part. So, let's say, for exercise one, complete each sentence with the or one of these adjectives. So, you don't have only to put one of the words that are inside the box, so you have to complete with one of the words inside the box and you have to add the or one. Both of them will be correct in some cases, but for example, number one, the mental health experts were on the scent to help the traumatized. So, as you can see here, we are using the word traumatized, but we are adding D. So, like that, you gotta do it in every single sentence. Number two, many would agree that the rich have a moral responsibility to help the poor. Number three, only the brave will dare enter such a disaster scene to rescue others. Four, the old saying goes, youth is wasted on the young. Five, in a real crisis you will encounter the best and the worst or worst for this one guys, both of them are correct. You can leave it as worst only or you can add the worst. Number six. It was especially difficult for the old who had lived their all lives there. So for exercise number two. As you have read the lecture, so it says read the article and choose the best headings for paragraphs one to four, the list of headings below. You will not use all the headings. So guys, we have four spaces to the answer and we have six possible answers. So as the exercise says, there are two that we are not using. So paragraph one, it will be letter D. It all started with a photo. Two, it would be letter B. An organization is born. Paragraph three would be F. Innovate, educate, inspire. And for the last one, it would be letter C. Bridges around the world. This one was pretty easy, guys. So let's go. For number three, it says the answer. Answer the questions below. Use one word and or one number from the article for each answer. So number one, it says. What world describes the way Ken thinks of himself? Boy. 2. What were the Ethiopians using to cross the river before Ken arrived? Rope. What does Ken hope to create for people with his organization? Wealth. 4. What kind of steel design was chosen for the bridge? Lightweight. 5. How were the bridge supplies transported to the site? Donkeys. 6. How many thousands of dollars did the first bridge cost? Uh, it says 108,000. 7. What word describes the third part of the organization's strategy? Inspired. 8. 
What kind of bridge did the organization construct in Indonesia? Suspension. And for the last one, guys, it says sentences A to G below have been removed from the article. Decide which sentence belongs in each gap. One sentence is extra. Again, guys, there is one answer that we're not using. So for number one, it would be letter E. Happily, this boy owns a construction company. Two would be B. Ten men will stand on either side of the broken span and pull themselves across. Three. It's letter G. Now they can try to get to hospitals and schools on the other side and see family members they haven't seen for years. Four would be A. A being appropriate to the community is key. One size does not fit all. Five would be C. In addition, to local governments, it also works with other charitable organizations. And for the last one, number six would be letter F. Additionally, both farming productivity and labor rates increased by more than 30%. Okay guys, this is everything for this class, so goodbye, I hope to see you soon. Hello guys, let's begin working on the vocabulary for reading part two on practice test number five. Get ready. Okay guys, so in this part of the activity, we're going to match the nouns with the pictures. All these nouns are part of your reading part two for practice test number five. So repeat after me, geothermal, heat, interest, load, livelihood, core, solar panel, steam, blade. Please match them with the adequate picture. Now, we have the same nouns, but now we have to match them with their definitions, guys. So, for example, for number one, we have geothermal heat, and the correct definition is the heat inside the earth, or the heat in the center of the earth that comes from the center of the earth, or close to the center of the earth. Like this, you have to uh, move on and find the rest. All right, guys, now, moving on to the following activity. It says, fill in the blanks with one of the adjectives that you have here, also part of the reading. So repeat after me, controversial, unsightly, towering, initial, non-renewable, viable, cost-effective. So these are some good examples in ways in which we can use these adjectives. So let's look at the first sentence. It says, blank energy sources such as natural gas and oil are not the future. Wind and solar energy are. The correct answer here is non-renewable. Please fill in the rest. Okay guys, now we have matched the vocabulary words to their definitions. So uh, we have the adjectives, the same adjectives. So let's look at number one. What is controversial? So the correct definition for the word controversial is causing disagreement or discussion. Please match the rest. All right. For this following exercise, you have to tell me three things that you find. One, controversial. Two, cost effective. And three, towering. So uh, let's look at the first one. For controversial, I wrote genetical engineering. This is an example. Why is this controversial? Because some people think some good things about it and some people are scared of it or think that it might be dangerous. We also have number two, which is cost effective. And an example of this would be a business, which means that the effort or the money that you put into it is worth it because you achieved what you wanted to achieve, your goal. And then we have towering. An example of towering would be the Notre Dame church. Very, very tall church. Okay, guys, now moving on, we have match the verbs with their pictures. These are the list of verbs that are also included in your reading. So please repeat after me. Tackle, pump, drill, generate, ruin, deplete, Harness. Okay, 
Now, guys, uh, for number one, we have tackle, and the picture for tackle is right in the middle, which is a rugby player tackling another rugby player. Tackle. So please, for the rest, match, write the numbers on each of the pictures. Now, please fill in the blanks in the crossword puzzle with the verbs from the vocabulary that we just saw according to their definition. We have some that are written across and we have others that are written downward. So be very careful. Fantastic. Guys, now for this exercise, you have to create five sentences using one verb, one noun, and one adjective from the vocabulary words. You can repeat one of these once or twice in one of your sentences, but preferably try to use five different verbs five different nouns and five different adjectives in each of your sentences. So uh, let's look at the example that we have here. We're going to use geothermal heat, generate, and viable. Geothermal, geothermal heat will be a viable way to generate energy in the future. Okay, moving on guys, we have to fill in the blanks in this text with the list of the words that we have here on the side. We have all of our verbs, all of our adjectives and all of our nouns that we have reviewed so far. So let's read together. Last week, my dad and I installed a blank so we could blank enough electrical energy for our house to function. We had to blank several holes on the rooftop and it took us almost a whole day to set up. Some people think that this technology is not blank because the blank cost is too high. However, we did not regret buying it because even though we had to take out a blank and pay it off in six months with a high blank rate, in the long term, we have found that it has actually saved us a lot of money. And more, most importantly, it is a way of helping the planet. Please fill in the blanks with the words, guys, for next class. Okay, guys, now let's read together. Practice test five on reading part two on page 104. Please open your books. For questions 9 through 15, you're going to read a magazine article about alternative energy. Seven sentences have been removed from the article. Choose from the sentences A through H the ones which fits each gap, 9 through 15. There's one extra sentence which you do not need to use. Green Planet. How the world is thinking about more environmentally friendly energy sources. With more emphasis on being green these days, it's not surprising that environmentalists are trying to tackle issues related to energy production. For centuries, people have been using non-renewable fossil fuels, like coal and oil, to create energy. While they have undoubtedly proved effective in supplying energy to millions, fossil fuels are incre increasingly seen as the means by which we are destroying our atmosphere and indeed our environment. First and foremost, the burning of fossil fuels like coal and oil releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and this is the main factor contributing to the problem of global warming. Secondly, these fuels are quite simply running out. So where does that leave us? In simple terms, we need to stop using non-renewable fuels and focus on other forms of energy production instead. We're now well on the way to having viable and cost-effective ways of generating energy without depleting the planet's natural fuel sources. Alternative energy is a term applied to energy sources that don't use fossil fuels. Instead, it harnesses renewable resources like the sun, wind, and geothermal heat in order to produce electricity. Solar power is gaining in, is gaining in popularity all over the world as a cost-effective way of producing energy whether for heating water or for producing electricity. For countries with hot climates, especially those close to the equator, Ecuador, solar energy is probably the best alternative energy option due to the large amount of sunlight they receive. Some governments are now offering low interest loans to help deal with, these, with this issue. Wind power has been a controversial topic in recent years due to the, the unsightly the unsightly appearance of towering wind turbines. This is particularly true for areas of natural beauty, such as mountains and coasts, as they are often better sites for the, turbine, for the turbines. 
These locations are home to people who make their living through farming, fishing, or tourism, and they see the turbines as a high-tech threat to their livelihoods. However, some people argue that the appearance of and noise from the turbines is a price worth paying for clean energy. Another alternative energy source which is being used increasingly is geothermal energy, which involves harnessing the energy produced deep inside the Earth. Red-hot magma at the Earth's core transfers huge amounts of heat to the surrounding rocks. This layer is drilled down to and the heat is used as a source of energy. Though relatively costly, this alternative form of energy would not only meet the demand for energy, but would also be a real alternative in countries with little solar and wind energy potential. Energy production is changing, and alternative methods of generating power are becoming more popular throughout the world. With the use of solar panels, wind turbines, and geothermal power stations replacing the burning of fossil fuels, one hopes the world is set to be a greener place. Okay guys, please complete the blank spaces with the paragraphs that are missing. You have the options in the, in the following page on page 105 from A through H. Okay guys, so let's get started with the activities from our student book. Please open up your student book on page 110 and 111. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the images on pages 110 and 111. The first one says, Malala Yousafzai is a young activist for female education. She spoke at the United Nations on her 16th birthday. I know we, we all know who Malala is, right? Maybe we're not completely sure about what she did, but we, we have heard of her uh, a lot, right? Now the next one says, young people volunteer to serve food to less fortunate people in their community. Okay, so what do these two people have in common or what, what do these two images have in common? They're probably both activists, right? So before we move, move on, what I would like for you to do is in your notebooks answer these questions. Who is Malala Yousafzai? What does she do? And what happened to her as a result of being an activist? So in your notebook, take some notes about these three questions. Go ahead and write them down. And once you finish, uh, we'll check the answers, okay? Please pause the video while you do this. And once you finish, uh, play it again. Okay, so uh, having having gone over Malala, let's go ahead and go over the first question. Who is Malala Yousafzai? So remember, she's a Pakistani education advocate who at the age of 17 in 2004 became the youngest person to win the Nobel Peace Prize after surviving an assassination attempt by the Taliban, right? Remember, she was in a school bus and she got shot there. Now, number two, what does she do? Well, she's an education activist, right? And what happened to her as a result of being an activist? So she had been tried to she has been tried to be killed and has given a speech at the UN uh, United Nations when she was 16 years old, right? Okay, so uh, guys, do we have any activists like Malala in our country? Can we think of any? Maybe if you're familiar with the topic, you might think of a couple. If not, please go ahead and go and look for them. Yes. Think about activists in Mexico, right? And what have they done? Great. Okay. So uh, today we're going to be talking about grammar. Okay. Before we get started, I would like to go over this with you. Today we're going to be talking about participle clauses. Okay. Now, Participle clauses are used to replace relative clauses, okay? They're used to replace relative clauses. In other words, uh, they are used to shorten a relative clause using present participle clause 
or past participle clause, okay? So participle clauses reduce, reduce the relative clause, okay? So, first of all, present participle clauses start with a verb in its ing form, okay? The verb goes in ing. And in past participle clause, of course, the verb goes in past participle, okay? Good. So let's go over some examples. First, let's go over present participle, the, the ones that start with ing, okay? For example, I have, I liked the man, I talked to the man who is standing over there, okay? So if we read the sentence, it is easy to identify that the relative clause is who, right? And the verb that follows is who is. That would be the relative clause. Now, we're going to go over we're going to go over uh, the how to reduce it, okay? So, for example, it says, I talked to the man standing over there because we took away that relative clause, the, which is who is, okay? We took it away and we just left, leave it as I talked to the man standing over there. And the relative clause would, or the participle clause, I'm sorry, would be I talked to the man, the, the participle clause is standing over there. Okay, now the same with past participle clause. An example would be, I watched the new movie which was released last week. And as we know, the relative clause is which was, right? Now, deleting which was or taking away which was, the sentence would just, would just be, I watched the new movie released last week. And we know that the participle clause is released last week okay uh, as you can see guys participle clauses are just reducing the relative clause we take away the relative clause and we just leave the participle clause and it's totally totally perfect okay this is like a formal way of expressing ourselves as well okay so uh, moving on with the activities in our book on exercise number one it says, identify all the relative clauses that are correct and could have the same meaning as the corresponding reduced clause in the grammar box. Okay, so let's go over the first one. It says the UN created a fund, which what are we talking about here? We're talking about the UN, right? Therefore, we know that we, we cannot, it's talking about an association, not a person. So we cannot say who is called. It has to be which was called or that is called. Both can talk about things. Now, the next one. The fund supported millions of children. So, who are we talking about? We're talking about children. Can we say who are affected? Yes, right, because we're talking about people. Can we say which affected? No, because, again, we're talking about people. Or millions of children that have been affected? That can also be correct. So, both of the correct answers can be A or C. Now, the next one, it says, the CRC declares different rights. What are we talking about? We're talking about the rights. Can we say we're connected? No, right, because we're not talking about place. So we can say which the UN connected to housing, health, the economy, and politics. That can be correct. Or which are connected to housing, health, and economy, the economy and politics. So B and C can be correct answers because we're talking about rights. Now, number four, the Voices of Youth website brings together young blogger, bloggers and activists. So, who are we talking about? We're talking about young bloggers and activists. So, can we say who work on development issues? Yes, right. That is correct. Who have been working on development issues? That can also be correct. And that are working on development issues? All three answers can be correct. Yes, so just be careful with that. Guys, let's move on to our student book on page 144. Okay, 144. Okay, now that we're there, let's read about participle clauses. It says a relative clause is often reduced by using a participle construction. Past participle clauses reduce relative clauses which use a passive verb, whichever tense is used, okay? 
So um, we use participle past participle clauses when we have a passive verb. Okay. For example, we remember a passive verb would be uh, the the relative clause, the relative pronoun, which is who, uh, which, that, where, mm -hmm. and it has to be followed by a verb to be. For example, it says the UN created a fund called UNICEF, or the original sentence would be the UN created a fund which was called a UNICEF. So remember, the relative clause there would be which was called, and we just leave it as called because it's a passive. So therefore, we have to use past participle clause. Now, present participle clauses reduce relative clauses, which use an active verb whichever tense is used. So if it's followed by an active verb, not a passive verb, not a verb to be, we use present participle clauses. Okay, for example, the CR, CRC declares different rights, including things such as a right to a safe home. There, so we, we just left including. So uh, the, the original answer would be the CRC declares different rights, which includes things such as a right to a safe home, okay? So as we can see there, we use present participle clause because uh, we just have the verb to be, I'm sorry, the, the relative pronoun plus the active verb, okay? We don't have a verb to be, okay? So that is the difference of when to use when, okay? Now it says adding not to the participle can make a negative. So we can say students not wearing the correct uniform will be punished. So we can just uh, add uh, not, and that will make the sentence a negative sentence. Okay, so let's move on to the first exercise. On page 145, we have exercise number three. And it says, rewrite the following sentences using a participle clause. So the original sentence in number one says, the policeman who dealt with my case was very helpful. So we have who is the, pro, the relative pronoun and we have dealt. That is an active verb, right? Even though it's in past, it's an active verb because we don't have a verb to be. That makes it a passive voice, a passive uh, verb. So what do we need to use according to the rules? We need to use, uh, what is it? Present it's present participle, right? Because it's an active verb. So the policeman dealing with my case was very helpful. Okay? So, guys, what I want you to do is to go ahead and answer numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then we'll check them together, okay? Be very careful. Go back to rules if necessary. And we'll check them once you finish. Pause the video while you work. And once you finish, play it again. Okay, so let's check. Number two, the man who was arrested after the incident last night has not been charged. So we have who was, right? So that means it's, an, it's a passive verb. We need to use past participle, right? Okay, so police have not charged the man arrested after the incident last night. Okay, number three, the number of young people who are not working or in school is rising, racing. So there has been a race in the number of young people blank or in school. So who are not working, that is a, a passive structure, right? Because we have who and the verb to be. So that would be not working, not working, right? No, but R is just, uh, it's just, uh, what is it? I'm sorry. It's just uh, an auxiliary verb. So therefore it will have to be not working. 
Number four, the number of people who have personally experienced a crime has actually gone down. So we have who, have, that would be uh, an active verb, right? So the number of people experiencing a crime has actually gone down. We just change that. Now, number five, I think that children who are exposed to lots of violent movies often become violent themselves. So, uh, who are exposed? I think that children exposed to violent movies, right? Because we have who and the verb to be. Then number six, anyone that, that the train strike tomorrow will seriously affect Anyone that the train strike tomorrow will seriously affect can stay home. So anyone seriously affected by the train strike tomorrow can stay home. Okay, excellent. So let's go back to page 100. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. On exercise number four on page 145, it says reduce the underlying clauses. So let's do the first one together. It says, police are searching for a man who has been accused of attempting to rob a bank in Vienna today. So what we need to do is just reduce. So we cross out the relative clause that we don't need. And if we have to, we can also add some words to it. Okay. So police are searching for a man who has been accused of attempting. So what do we need to delete? Who has been, right? So it would just be police are searching for a man accused of attempting to rob a bank in Vienna today. Okay. So guys, take a couple of minutes to answer this. Pause the video while you work. Once you finish, play it again. Okay, so let's check. It says, a man wearing a bright red scarf, which was wrapped around his face, approached to a cashier and told her he wanted money. So, we just need to, to delete which was wrapped, right? A man wearing a bright red scarf wrapped around his face. Number three, because she didn't realize that the man was actually demanding money, the clerk simply said that she didn't deal with cash transactions. So, we have to take away because she didn't realize and because it's a, it's an active verb so we would just ha say it's negative so we would just say not realizing not realizing that the man was actually demanding money the clerk simply said that she didn't deal with cash transactions and at the same time directed him into the to the next counter so um, at the same time directed him so that would just be directing him to the next counter apparently because he was put off by the long line at the next counter and the clerk's calm reply so that would just be um we delete because he was so apparently put off by the long line at the next counter and the clerk's calm reply the man dropped the box he was carrying and ran off after she had seen the man run off the cashier suddenly realized what had happened. So, we delete after she had, and seen becomes, we have to add the verb, have, have becomes having, right? So having seen, having seen the man run off, the cashier suddenly realized what had happened because they were concerned. So what do we need to do there? We delete because they were concerned and we just leave concerned, right? Concerned that the box looked suspicious, the bank called the police and ev evacuated the building. The package was found. The package was found to be harmless and the robber pretty useless. Okay, great. <laughs> this is kind of a, a nice story, right? Okay, so um, let's let's go ahead and and continue. Okay. Great. Let's move on to page, to our student book, to page 110. Okay? Go. 
Okay, so now on our student book on page 110, we have this grammar box and it says reduce relative clauses. A says, in 1946, the UN created a fund called UNICEF to support the millions of children affected by World War II. B, the, 44, the 54 articles of the CRC declare different rights connected to housing, health, the economy, culture, and politics, including such things as the right to a safe home and the right to play. C. The Voices of Youth website brings together young bloggers and activists, blank working on development issues to share their ideas. So as we can see uh, in numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we have some reduced relative clauses, right? And they just become um, participle clauses. For example, number one, instead of saying create a fund which was called, we just say called, right? Or of children who were affected, we just say affected. Then in number three, declare different rights which are connected, right? And we just say connected. We take away the, rel the relative clause. Then uh, which include, we just say which, in which, we just say including. And then in number five, uh, an activist who are working on development issues. We just say working, right? We just leave it with present participle. Okay. So remember when we use each one. Now, moving on to exercise number three, it says to read about some research findings and projects available to young people. Fill in the blanks with the correct participle of each verb. So let's do the first one together. It says, research has found that the number of young people blank in dangerous behavior has fallen greatly over recent years. Young people, we just say, um, involved, right? Involved in dangerous behaviors. Okay, good. So guys, please go ahead and complete the rest. Take a couple of minutes and once you finish, we'll check it together. Okay. So let's check. Um, in fact, in fact, youths are actually far more likely to be victims of crime rather than criminals. Yet most people think that the amount of youth crime and antisocial behavior is getting worse. The suggestion is that this may be because media reports still focus on youngsters. On youngsters what? Misbehaving. Blank ignore the many community projects. Ignoring the many community projects reducing crime. These community projects involve such things as cafes, cafes set up for teenagers to meet after school, community gardens, teaching teens about sustainability, and a time bank designed by young people. Blank, allowing them to earn rewards for doing volunteer work. <clears throat> Okay, good. Hopefully, um, this was kind. Of, this is kind of easy to answer, right? But now, um, in number four, it says to work in pairs and discuss the questions. Do you think the research explaining activity three would produce similar results in your country? Here in Mexico, if they have places for teen teenagers to hang out after school, do you think they will work? Maybe yes, right? Maybe some cafes in which students can only focus on answering their homework together, helping each other. Um, that can be beneficial to us, right? How are community projects successful in reducing crime and antisocial behavior? Well, we keep people busy, right? We don't give them time to to uh, think of what to do or, or what to steal. So they, they are busy, okay? That's what I think. Okay, now uh, moving on, guys. Now we're going to move on to adverbial participle clauses. Okay, so let's look at this. It says, A, having campaigned on behalf of young people, UNICEF also had a key part in the creation of the UN's Convention on the Rights of the Child, the CRC, in 1989. And using online discussions, discussion boards as, meeting, as a meeting place, the initiative provides a space for youngsters who care. 
okay so we have um, both verbs are in gerund in past in present participle in present i'm sorry and we have a verb there campaign which is in past participle so let's go over the rules let's go to the grammar reference section uh to go to see what what this is okay so it says adverbial participle clauses participle clauses and informa add information about the time or reason or the method connected to the main clause the subject of both clauses must be the same for example having campaigned on behalf of young people unicef also had a key part in the creation of the un's convention on the rights of the child crc so uh, we say after unicef had campaigned on behalf of young people unicef also had a key part in the creation of the un's convention on the rights of the child okay so we have to say we have to uh, both clauses have to be connected right now uh, we have then we have using online discussion boards as a meeting place the initiative provides a space for youngsters who care so the initiative uses online discussion board as a meeting place throughout which the initiative provides a space for youngsters who care then we can have having seen having seen the robbery i had to go to the court to give evidence because i had seen the robbery i had to go to the court to give evidence okay now the ing participles are more common in this kind of clause but ed participles can also be used with passives okay so that's what we have to have clear for example we have faced with a robber in the street i would give them whatever they wanted so if i was faced with a robber in the street i would give them whatever they wanted the present participle shows that an action happens or happened more or less at the same time as the action in the main clause okay for example working as a policeman my dad sees a lot of really scary things my dad is a policeman and while he's at work he sees a lot of really scary things then we can say a perfect participle which is having plus the verb in ed shows that the action happened before the action in the main clause okay so uh they both the the, the action happened before the action in the main clause so having just closed the door i realized i didn't have my keys so i had just closed the door when i realized i didn't have my keys okay so there are some rules that we just went over the first one remember that participle clauses add information about time or reason or the method connected to main clause the subject of both clauses must be the same okay now uh we can also have ing participles which are more common in this kind of clause but ed participles can also be used with passives so both can be correct and then we have a perfect participle uh, which is having plus ed shows that the action happened before the action in the main clause okay these are adverbial participle class clauses which just which just add more meaning to the sentence okay so let's go ahead and look at exercise number six on page 111 and it says look at the sentences in the grammar box choose the correct options so let's go ahead and do this together okay uh, number one says the subject of the participle clause is the same as or different from the different from the subject of the verb in the main clause so it has to be we just said the same right now the present participle which is in this case using shows the action happen at the same time or before the action in the main clause it happened at the same time right now the next one is the one we went over a, per a perfect participle in this case having campaign shows the action happen at the same time or before the action in the main clause that is before the action right good so uh let's move on to exercise number seven and it says complete this story about a foolish criminal by choosing the correct options okay so let's do the first one together it says having walking or walking home from school one day uh with a friend we came across a man on his bike so the correct answer would be walking right walking so guys please go ahead and take a couple of minutes to answer the rest read, read it carefully and once you finish we'll check it together remember to pause the video and once you finish play it again
Okay, so let's check. He said, the next one says, he started asking us where we were going and what phones we have. We just ignored him. But then he blocked us. Shouted or shouting at us to give him our phones. So that would be shouting, right? Not wanting or wanting to get into a fight. That would be, of course, not wanting, right? We handed them over and he biked off. Returned or having returned home. So, having returned, right? It happened after the action. I told my mom what had happened and we reported the incident to the police. A week or so later, arresting or having arrested someone. So, having arrested someone, the police asked us to go and see if we could identify him. Unfortunately, it wasn't the man who had robbed us. We left kind of frustrated, but then two days later, my friend's mom got a WhatsApp message from my friend's stolen phone. The robber had actually sent her a message, thinking or thought, thinking, right? Thinking it was his own mom, and he had his picture on the account he was using. <laughs> Even after having seen or seeing, seeing, right? Seeing the evidence against him, the robber still tried to tell the police he was innocent. I think he was hoping he wouldn't go to court, but faced or facing, but faced with us actually giving evidence, he changed his mind and pleaded guilty. Okay. This happens a lot, right? This is something that is very common. Once uh, our phones get stolen or robbed, then we keep them on WhatsApp and they, they change the WhatsApp image, right? And we know who robbed it. Okay. So guys, Hopefully all of this is clear. If it's not, uh, please go ahead and go go back and read the grammar reference section so that everything can be easy. Yes, this is just a formal way of using relative clause, reducing them. Yes, and this can make your English sound a bit more formal. Okay, so today's homework is workbook pages 104 and 105. Okay. Now, here um, we have exercises regarding grammar, which we did today in class. So, please tr answer numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and we're going to check them next class. Remember, guys, it is, it is important to go back to the grammar reference for any, any questions, okay? Great. So, please, please dedicate some time to complete this. Excellent. Guys, this is the end of today's class, okay? So remember to complete your homework. Remember, if you have any questions, go back to the grammar reference section in your books to uh, clarify any doubts. Guys, uh, please stay home, stay safe, and see you next class. Goodbye.